Hey guys, this is Charles Jaeger with Metal, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a reveal animation using shapes with Freeform Pro in After Effects. Let's go ahead and preview the effect. Before we start, you can download the free project file from this tutorial on Metal's website. I'll have a link for that in the description. And you can always download a free trial of Freeform Pro from Metal.com. All right, let's jump over to After Effects. All right, guys, inside of After Effects, let's start out by creating the sphere object that we're going to use with Freeform Pro. Now, I have a texture here that's included with the project file. I'm just going to drag this into a new composition. And I'm going to right click here, go to Composition Settings, and we'll just name this Texture. Then go ahead and click OK. And this is an rectangular image. And these distortions you see on here, those are created using Mantra VR, which is another plugin from Metal. And we're going to use this as the basis for our sphere texture. Let's go ahead and create another composition. And this is going to actually be for the actual sphere itself. And because it's going to be rendered several times with Freeform Pro, you don't have to make this composition very big. So I'm going to set this at 256 by 256. Again, because there's going to be multiple of these all across the screen. I'm going to have the duration be 15 seconds. And we'll just go ahead and call this sphere. And go ahead and click OK. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select that texture comp. And I'm going to drag and drop it into the sphere comp. And we're going to apply the effect CC Sphere. So come up here to Effect. Come down here to Perspective. And then select CC Sphere. And let's adjust some settings here so this isn't getting cut off by the edge. So for the radius, I'm going to bring this down. Set it around 100. We can adjust the lighting as well. So I might adjust the light direction here, kind of a little bit more up at an angle like that. Come down here to shading. I'm going to set the ambient light here to 35. Bump that up just a little bit. And for reflective, I'm going to set this to be at 50. Again, you can see we're just brightening that up. Now I'm also going to check on internal shadows and transparency fall off. And I'll show you that in just a second. We're going to deal with a little bit of transparency. But first, let's create a looping rotation with this sphere just to make it look a little more 3D and more dynamic. So I'm going to come here to rotation, and I'm going to go ahead and at the very beginning of my comp, create a keyframe for each of these. And let's just move all the way to the end of the 15 seconds. And you can change these to any random values you want. So for the X rotation, I'm going to type in negative 3. For the Y, I'm going to type in 2 rotations. And then for Z, let's go ahead and type in negative 1. And now if we go ahead and scroll through this, we're going to see the sphere just rotating randomly in a lot of different directions. Now one thing I also want to change here is a reflection map. I actually want to check this to be none. I want to have that off, that way we're not seeing the texture reflected on itself. So now we're getting a nice look with this. Now what we can do though is CC Sphere will actually honor transparency. So if we come back over to our texture comp, I'm going to select that texture in here and I'm going to hit T on the keyboard for opacity. And let's lower this to 50%. If we come back over to the sphere comp, we can now see when this rotates, we can kind of see through the sphere a little bit there. And so that adds kind of a nice dimension to this. Again, kind of giving it more of that 3D feel on everything. Now I want to bump up the colors a little bit and also kind of change the hue as it progresses through the loop. So I'm going to right click here and do a new adjustment layer. And we're going to add a few effects onto this. And the first one's going to be the hue and saturation effect. So under color correction, we're going to select hue and saturation. And on the channel range here at the very beginning of the comp, let's go ahead and create a keyframe and just move down here to the very end. And we're just going to add a one here for one rotation. So again, as we scroll through here, we're going to see it's kind of changing colors. And this will look a lot better when we use this with Freeform a little bit later. Let's bump up the vibrance here as well. So I'm going to go to color correction and select vibrance. And let's just go ahead and increase this to 100. So it's really popping with colors there. Now that we have our sphere set up, let's go ahead and create the composition for the image that we're going to be displacing. So I'm going to come over here and create a new composition. I'm just going to call this Image Displace. And I'm going to have this be 2000 by 2000. Again, we want the frame rate to be the same and 15 seconds long. Go ahead and click OK. And I'm just going to drag in an image here and I'll just scale this down. So this will be the image we're working with. You're going to want to make sure it's black and white. If it's not already, you can always apply the tint effect to it. So effect, color correction, tint. And then you can use a curves effect as well if you want to add some more contrast to that. 
but everything's gonna be displaced based on the luminance values of our image. So now let's go ahead and create our main composition. So go ahead and select create a comp. We'll just call this main comp. And I'm gonna have it be 1920 by 1080. Again, 24 frames per second and 15 seconds long. Go ahead and click OK. So now let's go ahead and create a new solid that we're gonna apply freeform to. So I'm gonna right click and do a new solid layer. And we're just gonna name this freeform pro. And we want this layer to be the same size as our image that we're gonna display. So again, we want this to be 2000 by 2000. It will just work a lot easier if they're the same size. And go ahead and click OK. And with that selected, let's apply Freeform Pro to that layer. So go to Effect, come down here to Metal, and we're gonna select Freeform Pro. Now there's a few things we're gonna change in the settings of Freeform Pro, just as we're kind of setting this up. It's kind of a multi-step system, but it is really easy, and again, everything's gonna be procedural once we get to the end, and that's gonna make this really easy to work with and reuse. So let's first drag in our displacement image and our sphere composition. So I'm gonna select the sphere, place it underneath the Freeform layer, and we're gonna select the image displacement and place that underneath Freeform as well. We can actually turn the visibility of each of those off just in case they might show up later because we don't need to see those. Now let's go back over to Freeform and come back over to the effects and controls. Let's navigate to the displacement mapping. And for our displacement layer, we wanna make sure we select the image displace. And we won't see any change in that immediately, but we're gonna come back to that a little bit later. And I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna turn off the display grid so we just don't see that yellow outline on everything. I'm gonna widen this up too so we can see these settings a little bit easier. Now let's come down here to the primitives and we'll set up our sphere object. So you can see it says render primitives and we're gonna come in here and we're gonna select plane because this sphere is actually gonna be projected onto a flat plane. And right now we have so many primitives on screen that it just still looks like we're looking at a solid white layer. So let's go ahead and adjust the primitive scale here. I'm gonna change this to be 15 by 15 by 15. And now we can see all the different planes we have here on screen. And we can also adjust the grid. So I'm gonna have this X be 80 and the Y be 80 as well. So we have a ton of planes here on screen. And next we wanna to navigate to auto orientation and we want this to always orient to the camera. And that's what's really gonna sell kind of that 3D effect for this sphere shape is that no matter where the camera is facing, the planes are always gonna be pointing directly at the camera. Again, giving the illusion of it's an actual 3D object. Now let's also adjust this, amplify the size of these layers based on the luminance of our image that we're gonna display. So we're gonna come down here, we're gonna select our image displace for that. And now if I go ahead and adjust this size amplifying value, we're gonna to start to see our image. You can see how it's kind of adjusting the scale of those planes. So in the darker areas, they get smaller, in the lighter colored areas, they get bigger, and we can actually see our image now coming through. So I'm just gonna leave this where it is right now, temporarily, just so we can kind of see our image and what's happening. Now let's come down here to apply texture. So go ahead and check that down. And for our primitive texture layer, we're gonna select our sphere. Now you can see those flat planes have been replaced by our sphere. However, right now they're all kind of the same color because the sphere is just being repeated over and over again. So we wanna adjust the sampling here. We wanna select, you can either select random still frame if you just want it to be a random image from that actual composition, but I'm actually gonna select random loop. So if I go ahead and scroll through here, we're gonna see the sphere rotating So that will actually loop through with this animation. But right now we can see the sampling's kind of a little bit awkward because we're getting kind of rows of the same samples. So just come here to a number of samples and just type in a bigger value. So I'm gonna type in 90. And that will help kind of randomize everything. Now you can see we're getting a much broader, more random sampling of the sphere composition. So I'm gonna zoom back out here. Now let's go up to displacement mapping because now we wanna offset everything using Freeform. So with our displacement height, I can increase this and you can see now what it's doing. It's actually displacing those spheres in 3D space. So I'm gonna set this displacement height value on something like 1200. And we're gonna keyframe this throughout the composition. Let's also go ahead and adjust some of the displacement noise. So for the noise amplitude, I'm gonna set this to be 200. For the frequency, I'm gonna set this at 50. For the noise sources, I'm gonna bump this up to 10. And to finesse this a little bit, I'm gonna adjust the noise amplitude multiplier here from 0.5 to 0.35. And the noise frequency multiplier, I'm gonna bump this up to three. And then finally with the noise evolution, I'm gonna set that at four. And feel free to adjust these and tweak these depending on your image and how you want your animation to progress. Now let's go ahead and keyframe all these values here at the very beginning of our composition. So I'm gonna keyframe the displacement height. 
I'm gonna keyframe the noise amplitude, frequency, and also keyframe the noise evolution. So let's go ahead and move down here to the very end of our composition. And I'm gonna set this displacement height to zero. The noise amplitude to zero, frequency to zero, and the evolution to zero. So now you can see we're back to our base image. If we go ahead and scroll through here, we can kind of see how that progresses through. But right now, looking at it straight on, we're really not getting a full 3D effect. So we can actually rotate Freeform Pro. And we're gonna come up here to the 3D transform. And we're just gonna do this with the native transform settings here. So we don't actually don't have to create our own camera. We're just gonna use the actual settings built into Freeform Pro. And we will keyframe these as well. So let's go over to rotation. And we're gonna start with the X rotation. I wanna set this to be negative 90. I'll go ahead and keyframe that. And let's go to the rotate Z here. I'm gonna keyframe that and I'll set this to be negative 60. Now we can see everything's a little far away from kind of the built-in camera with Freeform. So let's go ahead and adjust the position as well. So let's go ahead and keyframe the Y position here. I'm gonna set this to be 800. That'll move everything kind of down. And then we'll go ahead and keyframe the Z position here. We'll go with something like negative 1400. to bring that a lot closer to the camera. And let's go ahead and move to the very end of our composition. Go ahead and reframe everything back up. We can just zero these out. So for the X rotation, I'm gonna set this back to zero. For the Z rotation, set that back to zero. Let's go ahead and put the Y position back to zero. And then we can also do zero out the Z position. Now with the Z position, it's a little close still. I mean, you may want it this close depending on your image. I'm actually gonna move this forward here, probably about 500, just so it kind of pushes it away from the built-in camera a little bit more, so we can see more of our image. And we can also finesse the size of the spheres throughout our image. So if we actually move back to the very beginning, we might wanna see a little more detail on the spheres here closer up, and then we can actually adjust that and keyframe that throughout the animation. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna come back down here to the size amplifying value that we adjusted in the very beginning. So you can see you can actually increase this and we can see the spheres even larger here. And we can keyframe this. See, if I leave this at something high, if we go ahead and scroll through to the end, it doesn't look very good, it almost inverts the image. But right here, they look quite nice. So we can keyframe this. So I'm going to go ahead and set this at 300. I'm gonna keyframe the size amplifying value. Let's just move down here to the end. We'll bring this back down to a lower value that looks good. So something like 142 looks good right there. And again, that's keyframe. So you can see as we scroll through here, now we're really starting to see how this animation comes together. We have a close-up shot on the spheres here. And as they move back down, that scale is changing. It's so subtle that we really don't notice it by the time it reaches the end. Now, if you have any aliasing issues, Sometimes that'll happen if you have a moving particle that's really tiny like this. Just come over to the render options here, and we have anti-alias settings built in. So the default is gonna be medium, so you might just change it to something like high or very high right before you render. Again, you can just work with it at medium just so it works a little bit quicker. Now, as mentioned, everything is procedural now the way we set this up. So you could save out this project file, then you can reuse it later and just swap out the images or change the object. So let's come back over to our sphere. And I'm actually gonna go into the texture layer here. I'm gonna bump this back up to 100%. And then with the sphere, what I'm gonna do is on our adjustment layer here, I am just going to bring the saturation all the way down to zero or negative 100. So now we kind of have this chrome looking sphere. This will really change the overall look of our main composition. So let's go back over here. So now we have this really nice chrome sphere animation. It gives it more of a black and white look. Again, kind of basing it off the original image. So it's gonna look quite nice. And of course, we can always swap out the image as well. You could use another image or you could use a logo. So let's go back over to our image displays. And I'm gonna bring in another composition I have here. So this is just the metal logo. And you can see the metal logo, it's all white. And sometimes the displacement isn't as appealing. So what I did here was add a little subtle bit of fractal noise, you can see, just to kind of adjust that luminance value all over the logo. And then at the very end, I just have that fractal noise fade away so it goes back to pure white. And so now let's go back over to our main composition. Let's go ahead and preview this. So you can see how quickly you can just drag and drop different images in and get a completely different result because of how we set up this initial project file.
When you do swap in a new image, the one setting you probably will want to tweak some, if we come back over to Freeform, is going to be the amplifying value. So you can see as I adjust this, we get various results. So you might not want any other smaller spheres around. Or if you want to make this inverted, you could just drag it the other direction. So you can get a nice mix of results by adjusting that size amplifying value. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. And don't forget, you can always download the free project file from metal.com. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.